DJI just released the DJI Transmission, which is a wireless monitoring system with heaps of bells and whistles, and it looks impressive, but it's very expensive. Over two and a half thousand pounds expensive. This is disappointing if you want a setup like this, but you don't want to drop that sort of wonga. Luckily, we can make our own version, and it's a lot more affordable, and I'm going to show you how. <laughs> There I am, look. You might be thinking, what would I need a setup like that for? I don't work in a big crew, I work for myself. But let me show you what happened to me once. Here you go, Jeff. It took all day, but we got through all 53 employee interviews, so I hope you like it. Before you do, I forgot to tell you, we can't have that in the background, because that's our old branding. So, you're gonna have to do it all again. You can avoid situations like this by giving your clients a live feed of what you're filming at the time of your recording, or while you're doing your tests. And then they can give you feedback in the moment, which is gonna save you loads of time, rather than constantly stopping to look back at the footage, or finishing the whole thing and realizing that it's wrong. There may be times where you're using cine lenses and you can't focus by yourself, and using a wireless focus system means someone else can pull focus while you're concentrating on the framing and the camera movements. There have also been times where I'm filming myself and I need to make sure I'm in focus, but because the camera's so far away, I have to keep going back and forth to the camera, changing it slightly, then going back and checking, it's just a nightmare. Being able to hold this while the camera's on the other side of the room and dialing the focus is just a game changer. So as you can see, a wireless system isn't just good for people that work in big crews, it can really come in handy for people that work on their own and in a variety of different scenarios. The main parts to this will be the Axoon Cineview SE, and that's the wireless transmitter and receiver, along with the Axoon wireless focus motor FC01, cool name, but it's kind of built around the monitor. Now you can use whichever monitor you like, you may already have one, but I do want to point out a couple of things because you can either use one monitor or two monitors. You can even add extra receivers for multiple monitoring, but there is something to bear in mind if you're choosing between the Atomos Ninja 5 and the Shinobi. So if you're just using one monitor, it's nice and easy. You just plug the HDMI or SDI straight from your camera into the transmitter. You then plug your receiver part into your monitor. Simple as that. But if you're using two monitors, you'll need to make sure the first monitor has an in and an out. So you can go from the camera into the monitor, then out of the monitor and into the transmitter. That's why I use the Ninja 5 on top of my camera because it's got the extra output. And then I use the Shinobi for the monitoring. Now, if you're deciding between the two monitors, there's a little bit more info in this video you can check out. If you don't have a monitor yet or you don't have the budget, don't worry because you can use your phone, your tablet or your MacBook with the Axoon app, which has a bunch of assist features that you'd find on a professional monitor, including look monitoring and onion skin overlay. Then we need a cage to attach everything to the monitor to use it as a standalone device. Now I went for a Neatsy cage for a couple of different reasons. It's got the cold shoe mount on the top so I can easily mount the receiver. It also comes with an HDMI clamp to keep your cables nice and safe. And it's also got plenty of threads and ARRI mounts on the side and you can actually mount the focus wheel to the side. It's also a little bit more affordable than some of the other options that didn't have the same level of customization. The only other thing I really want to add to this setup is a side handle because then I could grip it a little bit more comfortably instead of holding it by the battery at the back. I don't like that. But I can't find anything that will fit. I'm sure there's a solution. If you do have any ideas, let us know in the comments below and share some links. The focus wheel is cool because it comes with its own mount that I've obviously mounted to the side of this cage. And you can actually set up which way the focus direction is. So you can turn it forward or backwards if you're using it on the different side. It's got a display on it so you can see your focus points. You can even trigger recording from here so you can record wirelessly, which is cool. But what I love most is the A, B function. So you can set an A and a B point if you've got two different subjects, for example, or two different characters, and you're pulling focus between the two. You can set those points up and you never have to worry about missing focus again by under or overshooting it. And that's just incredible. So even if you go a little bit further on the wheel, it's gonna stop at that point that you've set. Another good thing about focusing wirelessly is if it's on a lightweight tripod for example something that's not very sturdy you don't have to worry about nudging the camera because you're not actually physically touching the lens or the camera itself you're doing it wirelessly there's no movement there other than the lens barrel the focus wheel is nice and smooth it's got a good range of movement and it pairs instantly with the focus motor which is high torque and can handle the focus throw of big heavy duty lenses but because of the high torque it needs to be powered by an external battery so I'm using this V-mount battery that I power everything with, and the Axoon comes with a D-tap cable, so I'm just plugging that straight into the motor. Now, I would prefer it if you could charge the unit itself so I didn't have to worry about external batteries. However, it does double up as a standalone unit, and 
not wireless. So you can just plug the wheel straight into the motor and use it all together. Then you don't have to worry about powering it because the wheel itself has a battery in it, which it comes with. It comes with two batteries. Now, if you're using photography lenses, you'll have to get yourself some of these. They're geared teeth rings. I'll leave a link below. They're really good. You can get them in all different sizes. You just put them around the focus wheel of your photography lenses. Then the focus motor teeth will grip onto this and you'll be able to pull focus properly without it slipping. So the distance of the wireless transmitter is 1200 foot and that's a clear line of sight. And the range of the wireless focus is 350 feet. So you've got to bear that in mind. However, I did go all the way downstairs into the garage and it didn't drop out at all. I was still able to focus. And I was really surprised with that because with there being loads of walls in between and different levels, I thought it would cut out, but it was absolutely fine. There is a little... <laughs> <laughs> there is a little bit of latency as to be expected. It's 50 milliseconds, I believe. Nothing crazy. I mean, the Ninja 5 itself has a little bit of latency and it's just a little bit slower than that. In fact, if I, let's line both of these up. You can see that this Shinobi is slightly behind that and behind me. So we should get like three different speeds. This is my official scientific test, by the way. You love coming to my channel, don't you? For the monitors, I use these NPF 970 batteries. I'll leave a link below. Really good, these ones. They last a long time. But because I'm going to be mounting the wireless system on my camera itself, I don't want to add too much weight to it. So I use these smaller ones. They're the NPF 550 batteries. As you can see, they're a lot smaller and lighter than these. You can supply power to them if you want. For example, if this is just going to be on a tripod, then I recommend plugging it in. Then you're not going to waste any batteries. You can even charge it by USB-C. So I've just plugged an extra cable into my V-mount battery now. And then I don't have to to worry about that because the v-mount is going to last a lot longer than these how much does this setup cost i'm going to compare it to begin with because the dji transmission comes in at 1979 pounds but if you want the wireless focusing system on there it's going to cost an extra 589 pounds 2568 in total whereas our version with everything included in it that you see here comes in at 1,381 pounds. Now you're probably looking at this and thinking, what is all that? Well, if you do want to know more, check out this video here because it shows you the main parts of this setup. But make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell because I'm gonna do an updated version of this, including everything that you see here, why I use the parts I use, and that's gonna be in the next few weeks. So make sure you stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.